but the sheer level of population means we have to build a new house every two minutes. Even if the Labour government is able to fulfil the one and a half million houses that it wants to build during the lifetime of this Parliament, it will make no dent at all on the current shortage of housing. Rents have risen by 25% since 2021. Why? Population increase and pressure. And the list goes on through access to health services, to congestion, to pressure on infrastructure. The population crisis is the biggest impact, affecting people's lives, damaging their quality of life, and virtually nobody in this place even wants to talk about it. Nigel Farage's position on mass deportation of illegal immigrants is deeply intertwined with his broader views on immigration control, national sovereignty, and societal stability. A significant part of Farage's argument is that illegal immigration places an unsustainable burden on public resources. He claims that the UK's infrastructure is already struggling to cope with its existing population and the addition of illegal immigrants exacerbates issues such as housing shortages and long waiting times for public services. By advocating for mass deportation, Farage believes that these pressures can be alleviated, freeing up resources for citizens and legal residents. Farage's views on immigration and deportation have garnered both strong support and significant criticism. Among his supporters, there is a belief that he is addressing legitimate concerns about the impact of immigration on British society and that his proposals are necessary to protect the country's interests. More people will come to our country. And nobody is making the argument that there aren't some exceptionally wonderful people among them. There are, of course. But the sheer level of population means we have to build a new house every two minutes. Even if the Labour government is able to fulfil the one and a half million houses that it wants to build during the lifetime of this Parliament, it will make no dent at all on the current shortage of housing. Rents have risen by 25% since 2021. Why? Population increase and pressure. And the list goes on through access to health services, to congestion, to pressure on infrastructure. The population crisis is the biggest impact affecting people's lives, damaging their quality of life, and virtually nobody in this place even wants to talk about it. But perhaps it's on illegal immigration that I do really want to make a point. Four years ago, I went out into the English Channel repeatedly, filming dinghies coming across the channel, channel dinghies with an average of 16 people per boat. I was described as being a sad, lonely, desperate figure, always seeking attention. <laughs> and I've no doubt there are some that think that's still the case today. Thank you. But I did it because it was obvious to me what was going to happen. It was obvious that there would be a huge influx of people illegally coming to Britain across the English Channel. And it would happen because we stopped deporting people who came to Britain illegally. And perhaps the Labour Party might want to reflect themselves on the last period of Labour government, where we had Home Secretaries like David Blunkett, far, far to the right of people like the Shadow Home Secretary today. You came to Britain illegally during the last Labour government. Your feet didn't touch the sides. You were gone. You were out. Indeed, in the last year of the Labour government, from 2009 to 10, 50,000 people who came here illegally were deported. Now, none of that happens anymore. It didn't happen under 14 years of Conservatives, and it clearly isn't going to happen <laughs> under this Labour government. And I wonder why. I think you'll find it's the increased role of a court overseas that was set up in the wake of World War II with the very, very best of intentions that has now completely outlived its usefulness. It is, of course, called the ECHR, the European Court of Human Rights, and it was the Labour government that enshrined the Convention into British law. We will not stop the boats, even if we sent a handful to Rwanda. 
We will not stop the boats by attempting to smash the criminal gangs. We've been doing that to the drugs industry in Britain year after year, decade after decade, with no success whatsoever. Yeah. The financial rewards for smuggling people across the English Channel can now, can now net a gang two to three million euros a week. Whatever prison sentences or penalties are put upon them, there will always be people volunteering to make millions of euros a week. We will only stop this if we start deporting people that come illegally. Then they won't pay the smugglers. But we'll only do that by leaving the ECHR. But I've got a fun suggestion that I think would liven up politics, engage the public and see a massively increased turnout. Why don't we have a referendum on whether we continue to be members of the ECHR? Farage asserts that illegal immigration is often facilitated by well-organized criminal networks involved in human smuggling and trafficking. He believes that by deporting illegal immigrants, the UK would disrupt these smuggling operations, making it less profitable and therefore less attractive for criminal enterprises to continue their activities. Farage has often linked illegal immigration to broader issues of societal breakdown. He contends that uncontrolled immigration leads to the erosion of social cohesion as communities struggle to absorb and integrate large numbers of new arrivals. This can lead to cultural clashes, increased crime rates, and a general sense of insecurity among the native population. Farage often frames the issue of illegal immigration within the context of national sovereignty. He believes that the UK has the right to control its borders and determine who enters the country. Illegal immigration, in his view, undermines this sovereignty and the rule of law. People see the unfairness of it. They say, how can it be that we're on social housing waiting lists for a year, perhaps two years, when these people that come illegally are put straight into four-star hotels or, if not that, private accommodation. How can it be that those that come have access to dental care when we can't get an NHS dentist? And I think the fact that the hotels alone are costing over £7 million a day makes people pretty upset. Those that have come into the country legally aren't very happy about it either because they've gone through costs, time and hoops to be in the country the right way. But it's the other element of this that I want to focus on today. Frankly, I think this is very dangerous. You only have to look at what's happened in Sweden, in cities like Malmö, to see that a large influx of young males coming from an entirely different culture, and certainly coming from a culture in which women are not even regarded as second-class citizens, has had, frankly, disastrous social effects. But since the events of October the 7th, and what has happened in Gaza, and increased radicalization in the Middle East, this is even more of a problem. You see, these young men that come, and I've actually filmed this, I've filmed on the 12-mile median line, people throwing their iPhones into the sea, throwing their passports into the sea, doing everything they can so that we can't track and identify them. Although it's okay, because they get an iPhone, a new one, within 24 hours of arrival. But I think this is a national security issue. Farage has long been a critic of the UK government's approach to immigration, arguing that it has been too lax and has failed to protect the interests of British citizens. He believes that the uncontrolled flow of immigrants, particularly illegal immigrants, has led to a host of problems, including pressure on public services, housing shortages, and increased crime. In addition to concerns about immigration, Farage has pointed to the growing prevalence of conspiracy theories as a sign of deepening public distrust in the government. He argues that many people no longer believe official narratives and are increasingly turning to alternative explanations for the country's problems. Farage has warned that the combination of immigration concerns and the spread of conspiracy theories could lead to a full-scale revolt against the government. He claims that many people feel their voices are not being heard and that their concerns are being dismissed or ignored by those in power. According to Farage, this growing frustration could manifest in various forms of civil disobedience, protests, 
and potentially more extreme actions if the government does not respond to the public's demands for change. He argues that the situation is reaching a boiling point and that the government must act quickly to prevent a crisis. Farage has been highly critical of the current government, accusing it of being out of touch with the concerns of ordinary Britons. He argues that the government's failure to effectively manage immigration, combined with its mishandling of other issues such as the economy and public health, has led to a widespread loss of faith in the political system. He also criticizes the government for not taking conspiracy theories seriously enough and for failing to address the underlying issues that give rise to such beliefs. Farage argues that dismissing or mocking these concerns only serves to alienate people further and increases the risk of unrest. We also have to say it's only right and proper that you only get benefits in this country once you've been here for five years, obeyed the law, and paid your taxes. Again, these are policies, these are policies that are discriminatory in favour of British taxpayers and British people. If you go to work in Australia, you won't get benefits or dental care, you'll have to pay into the system for years and obey the law. We're doing what a good, sensible country should do, recognising that the first duty of a British government is to its own people and not to anybody else. And as far as Dover's concerned, well, I was going out into the channel four years ago, day after day, filming the small dinghies coming, predicting that vast numbers would arrive unless we changed policy and started deporting people who came illegally. Something, by the way, that we used to do up until 2010. You know, the last years of the Labour government, we were deporting up to 40,000 people a year who'd come illegally. We've lost our way. And part of the reason for that is a court in Strasbourg that's become increasingly activist. Nigel Farage's stance on welfare and benefits is rooted in the belief that these resources should be prioritised for British citizens who have fallen on hard times. He argues that the welfare system was designed to support those who have contributed to the country and are now in need of assistance due to unforeseen circumstances such as unemployment, illness or other hardships. Farage contends that extending benefits to illegal immigrants undermines the purpose of the welfare system and places an undue burden on taxpayers. The reason we voted Brexit and the reason Penny's party got the massive majority in 2019 is we voted to reduce the numbers coming in, and the numbers have exploded. To, uh, to, I mean, it, honestly, unbelievable. One in 30 people walking on the street out there has come in the last two years alone. The answer is we have to have net migration at zero. It means skilled workers can come, we can go work abroad, we have to have a freeze on the total numbers of those coming in. Nigel Farage has consistently blamed mass immigration for a range of issues facing the UK, including economic strain, social tension and pressure on public services like health care and housing. He argues that the influx of migrants has led to significant challenges in integrating new arrivals and has exacerbated problems such as unemployment, crime and the availability of affordable housing. Farage's stance on immigration has garnered significant support from those who share his concerns about the impact of mass immigration on the UK. His views have also influenced the broader political debate on immigration pushing other parties to adopt tougher positions on border control and deportation. However, his proposals have also been met with criticism from human rights organizations, legal experts and political opponents who argue that mass deportation could lead to human rights abuses and damage the UK's international reputation.